I mean, but you're trying to do good things and you're a billionaire. I mean, yeah. That seems a little bit like either superhero or supervillain. You have to choose one. To say that there are a lot of races going on in the world today would honestly be a bit of an understatement. There's the race to get the vaccines out there in the world to cure the current pandemic. There's a race to get the world back up to open to help the various economies of the world to grow. And in regards to two men, Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos, there's a race for wealth. A race that is aiming to lead one man to the goal of being worth one trillion dollars. Now given that, allow us to show you Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos' race to be the first trillionaire. Be sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel. Number 5. Can it really be possible to be worth one trillion dollars? To fully understand the race between Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos, you also need to understand the goal that they are aiming for. Because make no mistake, one trillion dollars is a lot of money, and it's not easy to get to that amount at all. There are only a few select companies in the entire world that are worth that amount, and that can change on a dime. Because let's not forget that net worth isn't exactly how much they have on hand right now, but rather an estimation of their worth via their businesses, homes, and other items that they own. A big factor in this, of course, is stocks. Not just the stocks they own, but the stocks of their companies. As the global pandemic has shown us, it's very easy to think that everything will be fine one day, and then something unexpected happens. The market crashes, and suddenly, people aren't worth as much as they were before said event happened. So given that, it might seem a bit impossible to reach $1 trillion in net value. And indeed, it is a hard task. But with Jeff Bezos and Elon Musk, it's not so much a matter of impossibility as sustaining the momentum that they have. Number 4. Jeff Bezos That means that what we have built over 20 years, we have built $840 billion of wealth for other people. Let's start off with Jeff Bezos, who is of course the founder and CEO of Amazon, the world's largest store and delivery service. Now granted, he doesn't own 100% of his company, which arguably would have put him really close to that 100 trillion net worth if he did, he only owns 11% of it. Now that being said, his wealth is one that is absolutely connected to how well Amazon is doing as a whole. And it's because of its success that he was able to branch out and do things like make Blue Origin, his own space company that aims to take people to the moon and outer space in general more easily. At the beginning of 2020, Jeff Bezos had just suffered a huge loss, not in regards to the pandemic, but rather a divorce from his wife of many years. In the settlement, she took about $35 billion of his net worth, which was a huge deal, and many wondered how that would affect Bezos long term. However, his blessing in disguise came via the global pandemic, because with the world being locked in and told not to go to stores or public places, they went to Amazon instead. Amazon scales grew higher than they ever had before, and as a result of that, Bezos not only recouped his losses, he now has a net worth of over $192 billion. Now, we could make a dig here about how it's sad that a global pandemic made one of the richest guys in the world that much richer, but in this case, we can't fault him too much. Amazon was already a top-notch service, and one that many people used. It's just a situation that arose where people used it a lot more. This meant that in the course of a single year, his net worth increased by over $79 billion, over double what he lost in the divorce to wife Mackenzie Scott. Pretty impressive, don't you think? Number 3. Elon Musk in the best way, because you know, I think we're often not using their talents in the best way. Um. Now, that's not to say that Elon Musk didn't have an impressive year, because he absolutely did. You see, while Bezos had a big jump, Elon Musk had an even bigger jump of $133 million in his net worth over the course of 2020, a lot of it even coming in at the last minute to overtake Bezos as the richest man in the world. In fact, the last minute surge was so grand that many people had a bit of a shell shock when it happened. But that begs the question, why did it happen? Well, that would be because of Tesla, the car company that he's the CEO and spokesperson for, as well as one of the head engineers. The thing you need to remember about Tesla is that they are very much the number one electric car making company in the world today. They are pumping out a ton of electric cars to try and get the market to go from gas powered cars to electric ones. And it's finally starting to work. Thanks to the efforts of Musk, they are going to be able to pump out almost 2.5 million electric cars a year. With more people investing in the market, Tesla stock prices have been skyrocketing. And it's even fair to say that in 2021, things will likely continue to improve for Musk even more as he will be releasing things like the Tesla Cybertruck and the Tesla Semi-Truck, both of which could exponentially help improve his company's worth in a variety of ways. By the end of 2020, Elon Musk was worth about $200 billion, usurping Bezos as the richest person around. And while early 2021 stock fluctuations have flipped the script once or twice for the two, Musk is back on top once again. 
and if things keep going the way some expect, that is likely to continue as the new year goes on. Number two, what will determine who gets to one trillion first? I said, look, when the stock is up 30% in a month, don't feel 30% smarter. So right now we have two men who are about at $200 billion in net worth, give or take, depending on the day. They need to get to five times that in order to reach a net worth of one trillion. So that begs the question, what do they and their companies need to do in order to be worth that much? Believe it or not, the answer lies not only in their main companies, but their side companies more than likely. Because while Amazon and Tesla have boomed in 2020, their exponential growth potential on those fronts is very limited, especially for Amazon as it's basically at its peak growth. Tesla can make more via factories and getting more cars made, but that'll only result in certain growth in stock. The true factor in them getting to $1 trillion in net worth is them expanding their space companies. Blue Origin and SpaceX are aiming to help get humanity to the stars and beyond in various ways. Blue Origin is focused on moon travel as we noted, and SpaceX is aiming to get humanity to Mars within this current decade. So why would these companies help them get the last $800 billion? Because of interest and growth. Right now, these are two companies who have proven their worth, but not their value. Both sides have gotten vehicles in the space, but so has NASA and all the other global space agencies. However, if they are able to go and make their primary missions of getting to the moon and Mars and do it faster and cheaper than NASA and the other agencies, that'll result in them getting some big money, as people will want to buy their stocks more because for the first time ever, we honestly will have space travel that we common folk could potentially go on. And if the space travel boom comes, one of these two companies will lead the charge. They'll literally and figuratively reap the rewards. Number one, will it be enough to reach the goal? If we're being honest here, just because these two men can reach $1 trillion in their net worth doesn't mean they are actually going to do it. As we noted in the beginning of the video, it is very hard to maintain a certain level of wealth in our world today because of how it can easily fluctuate on various matters. Also as noted, Elon went from being the richest man in the world to losing it basically a week later and then rebounding not that long ago. That's how easy it is to lose billions with things like the stock market. Plus, while it's true that they could go and reach $1 trillion in net worth one day, that doesn't mean they'll be able to maintain it or keep it at that level. Their companies would have to never have a bad year or have something come along that shakes the faith in the stockholders and so on and so forth. It's a very complicated process. But it is also one that these two men, these two massively brilliant businessmen, are still striving for, even if they don't want to admit it out loud. They're brilliant, they're competitive, and they have no issue with trying to get more money. So why not reach for trillionaire status? So what do you think? What do you think of this look at the two richest men in the world, how they got their money, and how they aim to be the first trillionaire in the world today? Can you believe the net worth of both of these men and how they continue to grow their wealth in various ways? Who do you personally think will be the first trillionaire? Or is such a goal truly impossible in the world right now? Let us know in the comments below, be sure to subscribe, and we will see you next time on the channel.